Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. Uh, forgive me, I got a little bit of congestion and a cold going, but you are in the right spot if you're looking to work smarter, not harder, if you're looking to increase your average sale price of a home that you represent, and you're looking to diversify your portfolio with more high-end and luxury homes that you represent, whether it be on the buy side, and or the listing side. Again, just like the Field of Dreams and Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come. We do focus on the listing side for this podcast, but if you build up your listing inventory, the buyers will come. So with that being said, I'm really excited about our guest, but before I introduce... Before I introduce Dan, I do want to remind you, if you have any questions for us, uh, shoot us an email, Michael, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Don't forget to check out our previous episodes on iTunes or Stitcher, iTunes or Stitcher, or you can go directly to luxury listingpodcast.com, or as I mentioned, check out Luxury Listing Specialist on iTunes or Stitcher. Again, we do have a book out there. It's on, it's on Amazon, Luxury Listing Specialist. It's an easy read, a lot of uh, good content, great information. It's literally just over 180 pages long. Check that out on Amazon. Or if you want more information on our certification, uh, go to Luxury Listing Specialist. With that being said, uh, we, our guest that we we bring on the show our uh, multitude of, of hats they wear. Sometimes they're luxury specialists themselves. Sometimes they're strategic alliances. Maybe they're a vendor that can help agents increase their average sale price, attract more luxury listings. And sometimes they're CEO, they're CEOs of real estate companies. And that's what we have today. We are fortunate to have Dan Duffy, who has been recognized uh, part of Stefan Swinepool's uh, Power 200. Uh, Dan came in at, as the 87th uh, most powerful and influential leader in residential real estate. He's with the United Real Estate Group. You there, Dan? I am. Good morning, or good afternoon, I should say. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for it's your been time a long today. Morning. <laughs> it's, I feel like it's morning too, but it's going quickly. So I uh, appreciate your time. We were talking a little bit offline, and uh, you, you you have a lot of accomplishments, and you're doing some really exciting stuff there. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, take a, a minute or two and and tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where you were at and and where you're at now, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Um, well, I guess hello to everyone. I know we can't really have a live conversation here, but uh, this will suffice. Uh, this is Dan Duffy. I'm the CEO of United Real Estate Group. The United Real Estate Group is um, a collection of companies, uh, two major um, flagged brands, United Country Real Estate, which is a hundred, nearly a, a nearly hundred year old lifestyle brand uh, in the niche of rural properties, um, from land to luxury properties, commercial real estate, uh, agricultural, timberland, et cetera, destination resort. That's United Country Real Estate. Um, and then we have our other national brand and, and soon to be international brand, United Real Estate. Um, we've got about 90 offices with United Real Estate from Boston to Beverly Hills and Miami um, to Chicago, Dallas, et cetera. And that's a residential brand um, serving major metropolitan areas. The other five companies are technology company, a marketing company, a private brokerage, and all those businesses work in tandem to make our agents more productive. Uh, prior to getting in this space, I guess half Half my career, I didn't realize it, but the other day I was doing the math, and half my career has been spent in real estate working with brokers and agents, um, building technology, building marketing platforms. It's been a quick ride, but prior to that, I ran the world's largest Microsoft um, systems integration, custom software development shop uh, in the U.S., India, and EMEA, based in London. 
Okay. And um, you, 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 we were talking a little bit, um, United Real Estate, uh, that brokerage, that residential uh, brokerage, you know, all the major cities, right? I think you said you have about 90 offices or so? Correct. And then the 100-year-old brand, uh, United Country Real Estate, more of a boutique, a niche with uh, lifestyle properties, whether it be rec, uh, farm and ranch, luxury uh, properties, but more rural, correct? That's right. We have 450 of those offices across the U.S. and through Central America. Okay. So um, one of the things that was very intriguing to having you on our show, Dan, um, is, you know, we talk about, you know, there's riches and niches and having, you know, one of the things that I help, you know, whether it be boutiques or even franchises or just large teams is we help them launch luxury divisions or strengthen their luxury divisions. And uh, one of the things that was intriguing about, um, you know, you and, and, and the companies that you're with is you do have these, these various brands within this big umbrella, so to speak. And um, talk, talk to me a little bit about, um, we were talking a little bit offline, but um, the, the two other things that, the two other brands that you uh, have is um, an auction company, and you also have like a very, you know, private, um, what you call unique, United Strategic Client Services. But before we get there, talk to us a little bit about um, United auction services? Because most people, when they think auctions, they think distressed sales, REO, bank-owned, but uh, you and I know that's not the case. So talk to us a little bit about um, the United Auction Services, and then we'll talk about some of the other brands here in a minute. But uh, let's start there. Sure. Uh, about about um, shortly after acquiring United Country Real Estate, we realized that there was a a lot of our clients um, have um, time certain exits that they would prefer um, they don't want their property to languish on market. They want to bring the market to the asset at a specific time, um, and they want to clear the asset and, and convert it into cash. So we, about 10 years ago, we brought on the what was who was then the president of the National Auctioneer Association as the president of um, United, what was United Country Auction Services, and what still is, I guess. Um, and we started building a network of auctioneers, welcoming, welcoming them to the team to support all of our agents and all of our brokers, whether they were an auctioneer or not, so they could play the auction card. And now we have the largest network of auctioneers in the United States. Um, and we, uh, I think auctions have touched last year, they touched about a billion dollars worth of transactions, um, either influenced the listing, it was an option for the client, they elected not to do it or they elected to do it. And then we closed, obviously, um, you know, uh, over $500 million worth of auctions. Um, but to us, auction method of marketing is an alternative that we like to make available to our clients when their needs and their property qualify. It's not okay. uh, one, one size fits all. And, you know, about 20, about 20 percent of our transaction volume is auction. Um, and the balance of it is traditional, you know, negotiated uh, transactions, list and sell. And what percent did you say? About 20. About 20. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. So we have the auction side of things. And, and for those agents out there listening, you know, again, the auction, don't have the conversation late when you're about to lose the listing. You know, I believe our job as agents is to, um, is to give the seller options and they'll explain the options. And based on where they're at today uh, and based on their motivation and what's important to them, let them decide. Um, but don't wait to the last minute to explain the auctions because then uh, in many cases they're going to think, oh, well, they just want, you know, a quick sale, and why didn't they explain them this to me earlier? So have the conversation about auctions, you know, early um, in the relationship, and, 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 don't, and don't wait till the end. So you have that um, brand within your company. Of course, you have your main residential brand, um, which is uh, United, um, United Real Estate Group, correct? Uh, correct, you, yep. Or is United, United, United Real Country Estate? Real Estate and United Real Estate, yep. Okay. Yeah, United Real Estate. And so that is more of a transactional-based, um, you know, is that more of like a flat fee model? Yeah, yeah, it's a flat fee model, um, full-service brokerage, our proprietary technology platform, which does everything from propagating agent websites, search engine optimization for agents, for their listings, um, full CRM, learning management solution, 
an entire productivity portal that's just, that's all proprietary that we built. Um, there's been a lot of news lately about, you know, uh, I think specifically Keller Williams announcing this big strategy shift where they were going to invest a lot of money in technology. We couldn't agree more, and we started that process, oh, God, eight years ago, and our platform is done, and our agents are enjoying it today for free. That's awesome. Yeah, so technology is, uh, you know, a real big buzzword. That, you know, we hear about disruptors in the industry, but technology is, is, is probably the most talked about buzzword out there when I go to these major conferences. Um, so you well, you know, do you, mind if I, do you mind if I comment on that? Because, please, you know, I, I've, I've been to some, you know, private Zillow events and some other things, and I tell you what, I really like what's going on. Because when you have $5 billion in the last 24 months, you know, come in from the outside into a space, there's going to be change. Mm. Even if some of it's not necessarily positive, that means that the industry is in need of change. Mm. And, and quite frankly, not to be critical of myself and my peers, um, that means we didn't, we didn't do our jobs. Mm. Cause if, if, if investors from the outside think they can be disruptive or, or positively disruptive, it's, it's, it's fine. It doesn't mean it's going to be negative. But if they can come in and they see opportunity, that means the incumbents or the people that were already in the space uh, fail to innovate. So we we set upon a journey, you know, coming from the technology space and having run a, techno- a large technology company, we uh, believe that the winning solution is where you innovate from the inside as opposed to coming from the outside. That's not to say that some of these outside companies won't be successful and aren't successful. I think Zillow's done a phenomenal job you know, doing what they've done. Um, it obviously has had some impact on margins for brokers, caused them to rethink their business models. Hence why we have the, the model that we do for United for residential. It's less impactful in the lifestyle real estate side of the business. But, but I think the innovating from the inside and having the capital to do it and having the DNA of your organization and knowing how to build technology and have the culture to absorb it is um, is a winning solution. Um, we, from the get-go, when we first bought the company, we started writing software. We started figuring out what agents needed to be competitive, to maintain a positive economic, um, you know, commission structure, et cetera, and quite frankly, serve their clients better. So we view our job as an outsourced chief technology officer to all of our affiliated agents and brokers, and we solve problems for them at little or no cost. I mean, the agent websites and the CRM platform and everything else on United is provided. You know, we spent tens of millions of dollars building it, delivered it to them, and told them, hey, surprise, it's free. (laughs) So we're willing to make those big investments, but we want to innovate from the inside. And we think because of our agents and our, our close proximity to them and our close relationship with them, they give us the roadmap of what we need to build that's most impactful to them and their customers. So we, we like where we sit um, with our ability to build technology to, the, to meet the needs, both today's needs and the future needs of, of agents to maintain you know, good business opportunities as you know, being a professional realtor and, and being a, a broker and an agent in this space. You know, we like where we are, and we've invested well over a decade and, and put our money where our mouth is uh, without a lot of braggadocious statements. Although, yeah. God, that kind of sounds a little braggadocious, doesn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that, that's all right. It's okay to talk about some of your accomplishments. Um, you know, there's an old real estate, there's an old adage out there: real estate agents have have skinny kids. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> shy, excuse me, shy real estate agents have skinny kids. Let me rephrase that. Oh, shy God. real estate okay, agents all right. have skinny kids. Well, guess what? Shy, well, it's funny either way, man. I yeah, like yeah. <laughs> shy real estate agents have skinny kids. Well, sh- shy CEOs can have skinny kids too. So it's okay to... Uh, uh, to I'm going to borrow that. Some, I'm going to borrow that. Yeah, yeah, it's okay to point out some of your accomplishments. So, so thank you. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. 
you know, you, you travel around the country, you go to a lot of these conferences, you mentioned yourself, and, you know, you have 90 different locations, or, you know, w- with your United Real Estate offices. You know, what are you seeing as, you know, we're going in the second quarter, 2019, you know, what are you seeing overall in, in the marketplace, uh, you know, maybe compared to a year ago at this time? You know, are we, are we you know, everyone's talking about a shifting market, a shifting market, uh, shifting from a, a seller's market to a buyer's market. Are, are you seeing that? And, and uh, or do you think it's all relative to that given market or, or, or it depends on the price point? Yeah, I think um, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Um, so it's, re- it's really hard to, to make a blanket comment about a country that is as large as we are and as diverse as we are. And mm-hmm. the local economies matter a great deal. So if you're in Austin, Texas, the dynamics of, of migration patterns into the, you know, how many people are moving there, um, the dynamics are vastly different from market to market. So it's hard to make a blanket statement as to where we see the market going. As it pertains to luxury, we are seeing um, properties move. Um, you know, obviously, luxury market tends to be, um, you know, because it's it, obviously, if you look at the total uh, notional value of or notional number of properties, let's just say 10 million and up, or even if you went down as, as, as low as 5 million and up, um, you're you're dealing with a pretty small subset of, of properties in the grand scheme of things. You know, when you have, you know, five, six, seven, seven million properties selling a year, you're talking about a pretty small fraction of properties that are, you know, five or six times the median home, home value price when you're talking specifically about residential. But we are seeing properties move. We are seeing sellers be reasonable because their properties have aged on market. And we're seeing them be a little bit more reasonable. The market is moving properties. It wasn't for a while. Um, you know, the capital markets um, and specifically the stock market, pe- people's balance sheets, confidence in the economy, confidence in, in the in the upcoming tax code. Um, it's causing people to you know to open their open their wallets and make some investments, and they see opportunity to buy. Right, and I think you're right. I think it probably is a buyer's market, and probably has been a buyer's market. And the difference is sellers are starting to get more realistic expectations as to what their properties are worth and some of the accretion of value uh, by holding a property for 10, 15 years. Um, they kind of let go some of that, um, some of that expectation. Um, but, you know, we are seeing some movement. We, we recently sold a property that had languished on the market for three or four years, um, a, a $12 million uh, project in the mountains uh, near uh, Aspen. And we sold that property um, in short order. And, you know, we had a good outcome for the seller, a good outcome for the buyer. You know, everyone was happy at the closing. Um, But that property sat there for quite a while. And I think what it did is it allowed the the seller to realize, you know, look, there's a reality of where people, you know, people want to buy smart and they don't want to be, you know, you didn't get your money if you can buy that kind of a property by being stupid, you, you, you did something or, you know, in some cases you inherited it, but either way you're smart with your money. Mm-hmm. But I do think I do see, we do see properties moving and, you know, properties that we probably would have said, no, you know what, we're not going to take this to market right now. The conditions aren't right. We are taking the market today and we're having good outcomes for our clients. That's great. That's great. Um, as far as the um, private, you know, entity or brand that you guys have. We talked a little bit offline, as I mentioned earlier. Um, United Strategic Client Services. Talk to us a, a little bit about this. And that's that's primarily for the ultra uber luxury properties, you know, $10 million and above. Uh, you, you had mentioned, correct? Yes. Um, so t- tell us a little bit about that, and and um, you know the, the you know we're, we're dealing with ten million dollar plus properties. Many times it could be celebrity, could be you know confidentiality is really important, right? They don't want um, their face, yeah, their name attached. They're very private, right? So talk to us a little bit about your experience with 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 that um, brand and and with that experience of dealing with ultra you know high end clientele. Yeah, you know, so what, let's start where why we started it, right? Start with the why. So, you know, we, we got involved with the business in 2006, and we have incredibly talented local professionals all over the country. We have 8,000 folks that fly the United flag, one version of it or another. And those, 
those brokers and those agents have clients and they exist in markets where, you know, the five or six properties that are truly outliers, you know, someone built a property that's 10x the median home, the average median home uh, value in the area. And it's a distinctive um, estate, you know, um, they, they're they able to put their foot in the door and oftentimes, and some of, a lot of our agents are actually capable of doing a great job marketing it. That's, you know, our office in Beverly Hills, we have a lot of talented folks that can, that's not a problem for it at all. That's the world they live in. And But occasionally you run into these distinctive luxury properties and the broker will have a great relationship with the owner. Um, they they know the opportunities coming onto market, and so. But what we found is that you know local brokers need um, additional resources, oftentimes on these uh, you know these truly exceptional estates or these truly exceptional properties. And so we built a private brokerage. We don't we don't publicize it. We don't really care if people know it exists, obviously, but it's by invitation only. And our agents know it exists, and our agents can play the strategic client services card, or what we, we refer to as SCS. And that is a group of people who have deep experience in selling luxury properties, um, even commercial properties, um, you know, um, operating businesses, et cetera. But this is for, you know, private clients. And we only do, we'll only look at a few hundred deals a year, and we'll only accept um, approximately 100 deals a year. And those projects require marketing. We own our own in-house marketing that does 1,500 separate projects a year um, with budgets of upwards. I think the largest project we did was just under $400,000 of upfront marketing that was expended to market a a billion-dollar resort. Hmm. Um, And so we, we can handle the stuff all the way up to that. But what it does is empowers 8,000 people to go and with our assistance, if they want it, we don't step on them. Um, it's, it's by invitation only. They, they will email us or, or call us and say, look, I've got a client that's selling a, um, you know, a $21 million estate um, in Chesapeake. Um, you know, a lot of acreage, gorgeous estate home, three other homes, you know, uh, you know guest homes, et cetera. And well, that project um, is best served by a by a private brokerage with um, you know twenty plus people in a marketing department, creative design, media buyers, strategic media planners, um, all of that. The videography, everything needs to be produced correctly, and then you have to know who the likely buyer is. Is it you know corporations in the area, CEOs that are looking for a retreat? Is it high net worth you know oil and gas folks from? you know, from Texas, our equine aficionados. Um, and so we develop campaigns working with our local agent and we make them shine. Um, they, when, we, when we pursue a deal, we rarely lose it from a listing perspective. And then we methodically execute what we told the client we were going to execute on. And most importantly, we show them proof of performance and proof that the, we reached the market. We show them everything from, we, we build custom websites for that asset. These are not your grandmas or fathers or even, you know, I don't know, even stuff that you see just off the shelf. This is all, this is very, very white, white label, not white label, but white shoe. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but yeah, it's like a white, white glove, white glove, but white shoe is, is an old term that talks about um, marketing companies in New York. So okay. it's very, very high touch and, mm-hmm. and it's very transparent. And these clients are discerning and they're private. We do a lot of country western, um, uh, you know, musicians that come into Nashville. We'll sell their estates for them, and no one knows we even market it. I mean, they know we marketed it, obviously. They know the property was for sale, but they we don't disclose who our clients are. Mm-hmm. And so, these are hedge fund managers that have you know, um, you know, properties all over the world, and they want to dispose of one of them because for whatever reason they've grown tired of it and they want to get it out of their portfolio. And so that takes a special effort. And so we built the private brokerage for that. And it's by invitation only. We don't advertise it. Uh, we don't mind if people know it exists, but you can't just ask us to do a deal. It, you have to go through a, the client has to be qualified and the property has to be qualified. But when they do, then they get the full weight of the holding company resources, which is seven companies. And, you know, we, you know, all of our marketing, all of our, even our capital, we'll put our own money up 
um, in many of these projects to uh, to make certain that we reach the market and we get a good outcome for our client. But that's uh, United Strategic Client Services. It's, uh, it's based in Dallas, but we operate domestically and internationally. You know, that's, um, that's, that's really cool. You know, one of the things that we offer on our consulting services is if an agent or an owner has a stale listing or they need, you know, some additional services, that's one of the things that w- we'll do. We'll team up with the agent, team up with the owner. It sounds, uh, you know, um, very similar to some of the things you offer, but we don't have the manpower, um, you know, that that uh, United uh, Strategic Client Services has. So that's that's pretty cool. So white glove service, uh, blue. Uh, what did you call it? A, a white shoe service t- too? Yeah, white. Yeah, white shoe. Yeah, that's it's a white. When they used to refer to the real, you know, the 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 big big big, you know, Coca Cola marketing company, like the people uh-huh. that do Coke and everything else, they they refer to them as white shoe, and that's, okay. they do that in investment banking too. But it's mm-hmm. it's an old term. I don't even know if people use it anymore. I'll probably get laughed out about that, but whatever. That's all right. That's all right. So yeah, so bespoke unique, you know, marketing plans for these unique properties, and and that you know for our listeners that might not ever have a ten million dollar plus listing, listing, uh, th- think about you know the trophy listing in your market. It might be a million, might be two million, might be eight hundred thousand for wherever, wherever you're at. Um, the the big point that I, I wanted you know to make there that Dan shared is for those unique properties, and again it might be unique just for you. Again, you can't have a one sh- one size shoe fits all, so to speak, and, and it, it, you have to create something custom and unique for that property. Determine who your buyer is. I, I like to use the word avatar. Who is your buyer? Is it, a, is it a young family? Is it, you know, is it someone that's, you know, in the 55 and older community? Is it, you know, who is your buyer? And then create your marketing pieces and your, your copywriting and your photos and your description to, the, to whoever you think that buyer is. Now, it doesn't mean that you can be wrong, right? You might think it might be a young family with kids and and ultimately, it's you know some you know some someone that's single with no kids. But but you can't be all things to all people when you market a property. So you really want to cater to the majority. So that's really the the big aha lesson that I I want to really you know real really reiterate from um, what Dan talked about. So. Um, Dan, we're almost out of time here. This is some amazing content, and uh, really enjoyed our discussion. If uh, if someone wants to find out more about uh, United, United Real Estate uh, Group and uh, United Real Estate, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, yeah, you can obviously take a look at any of our uh, brand uh, websites: UnitedRealEstate.com, UnitedCountry.com. And in there, you mentioned something earlier about differentiation and niche marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, United Country is extremely well developed into 48 niches, um, and we have subject matter experts and all the resources. And media. we own our own media. Uh, we have thousands of websites that target these niches that our agents enjoy every day. We generate five to ten thousand leads a month for them for free. Um, so you can take a look at unitedcountry.com, unitedrealestate.com, or you can also take a look at, um, if you want to, which we don't normally don't really talk much about in public, you can go to united-scs.com to see what we do in our private brokerage and kind of some of our testimonials and case studies of what we've done there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I appreciate your time. You're obviously uh, well-connected and uh, you're a plethora knowledge and, and resources. I really appreciate your time. And um, if anybody has questions about this episode or you want to you make a suggestion, you have a question for me on some of our services, or perhaps you want to uh, nominate somebody to be a guest, go ahead and shoot me an email, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, and I'll leave you with the two inspirational messages I always leave with. Number one is not the market it's the marketing. So remember, people are getting married. People are downsizing. People are relocating. That is what drives our industry. It's not who the president is. It's not what interest rates are. Life is what drives our business. And the last message I'll leave you with is prove them wrong. Don't let others tell you you can't do something. Prove them wrong. My name is Michael Lafito. Keep raising the bar in luxury real estate. And until next time, thanks for listening to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast. Podcast.